Number two of the chapter seven sample test. It says, determine the following probabilities and state whether the, the answer is theoretical or relative frequency, experimental or empirical or whatever, and or the sub, sub, subjective. Explain your choice. Drawing a king from a single, on a single draw from a deck of 52 cards. Uh, the, if you were to calculate that probability, you would do, do it on all, looking at all the possibilities that you could get, ways you could get a king over all possible draws, and that would be theoretical. And then B, if you, winter will be the snowiest in the last decade. It turns out that they, they will look at weather and patterns and, and based on the patterns on the El Nino and all that sort of stuff, they will look at the patterns and then this, this would somehow is based on the pattern, some past dat data. And so this becomes a relative frequency or experimental. And C, the big lottery winner is below the poverty level. The next big lottery winner is below the poverty level if 13% of the last 13% of the last 100 big lottery winners had incomes above the poverty level. So this is a relative frequency one. Because they're going to base it on the data on this. Now, num B, you could make the argument for um, it being just a subjective. You're someone who is just chatting about this. And if you mention that one, you say, I think it's uh, subjective because this sounds like someone just saying, ah, oh, they think it's going to be the uh, the snowiest in the last decade. Now, if it was somebody who was a uh, meteorologist, they, they, they may be looking at the, the patterns and that sort of stuff, and then it would be relative frequency. Uh, C is relative frequency because there's uh, some statistics on the lottery and how many were in poverty level. So those are kind of how I, you know, I could go either way on this, depending on the reasoning. So it says, explain your choice. And I've been explaining my choices and I could see explanations for those. The first one's uh, most likely theoretical and most likely relative frequency. Now, someone could subjectively say, I think it's uh, pretty, you know, it's like 1%. I just got that feeling or whatever. And that would be then subjective if you went that way. But most, usually, uh, and I said here, determine the probabilities and s uh, determine the following probabilities. So what is the probability of getting a king on a single draw? And so there are four choices out of 52, which is 1 13th. And so that calculation would be theoretical. Winner will be the snowies in the past decade. Uh, that for you, if you were to make it up, it would be subjective because you have no data to go by. And so you would might say, well, it's a 3% chance or 5% chance or no percent chance of, because of global warming or whatever. I don't know what, whatever you pick, it would be subjective. Um, the next big, what's the chance of the next big waterly winner being below poverty level if 13% of the last hundred big winners have had incomes above the poverty level. So if 13 had a percent above, and so that would be 87 or 0.87 would be the probability that they are below. And that's based on the data that I that's listed here, and it's not any hard and fast calculate outcomes to outcomes, and so this would be relative frequency and it would be 0.87. Okay, that's number two. 
Let's do number three on this same video here. Number three says uh, we have a, the Simply Burgers restaurant and they're serving only burgers and they always have their special sauce, uh, lettuce and onion on the burgers. So you have no choices with that. So you don't, that's useless information here. It's going to have a burger and special sauce and lettuce and onion on it. They do allow the customers to decide whether to add tomato, pickle, or cheese. And the burger will always come with one of three choices. Uh, fries, salad, or s slice of apple pie. So you have three choices for the alternate, uh, for the, uh, for what did I call it? For the side, times... How many choices? Uh, are there for the burger? Well, you, every there's only one way you only get a burger, but you get to choose whether to add a tomato or not. Remember, we can't just say add p tomato, pickle, cheese, or not. Some people might say that's four, but really you got the choice of adding a tomato or not, adding a pickle or not, and adding cheese or not. And so this is eight times three, 24 different burgers you could order. Make a tree diagram of all the possibilities. Well, you're gonna have a burger. Uh, you could have, uh, and if I start with the burger, I might go right next to add a tomato or no tomato, then add a pickle or no pickle pickle if I didn't add a tomato I could have added a pickle or not a pickle and then I could have added a um, uh, what was the third one cheese cheese no cheese cheese no cheese cheese no cheese cheese no cheese and then off of each one of those and I've gotten kind of small here so I'll not write the letters but uh, on the test I would re request that you put the sa uh, fry salad or apple pie fry sa uh, uh, salad or pie fry salad pie and you'll get all 24 branches on this so I make it made a tree diagram or this is most of it how many possible burger combination meals if you did? If you consider the choices of adding or not adding tomato to, to, to each of the sides, so there's 24. If a random burger meal, if a random burger meal is selected, what's the probability that the meal has a tomato or salad as part of the meal? So tomato would be this one and all the branches in there and so that's half of the 24 so that's 12 of them for sure oh see wait T tomato yes 12 of them have tomato and these that don't have tomato how many of them have a salad and so a salad is each branch it ha ends with uh, a possibility of a fried salad or apple pie. So one branch here will have a salad, one branch here will have a salad, one branch here will have a salad, one branch here will have a salad. That's four of them that'll have salad. So there's four more that have salads without tomato. And so that makes a total of 16 branches that will have to a meal of a tomato or a salad as a part of the meal. What's the probability that at least uh, at least one condiment, tomato, pickle, or cheese, on the burger, and there isn't a salad. So at least one means is the opposite of none, and how many ways have no uh, condiment? Well, that'd be one out of eight. One eighth 
or since there's 24, there'd be three out of the 24 that have no condiment. So all the rest of them, 21 out of 24, have at least one condiment. What's the probability that there's at least one condiment on the burg at burger and there isn't a salad? So how many of these um, don't have a salad? Well, for every three, one of them has a salad. So there's seven, seven groups of three, and so we have to take one third of those, seven out of those, so that leaves 14 out of the 24 that have that don't have a salad and have at least one condiment. I hope you followed that. One out of eight or three out of 24 have no condiments. So there's 21 out of 24 that do have condiments. And of those, every two out of three have uh, something besides a salad. And so that's how I got to there. Okay? And you could follow the branches in your tree diagram if you made the tree diagram completely and see the 14 branches that have that. And that's kind of what I expected you to do. It would take some time to do it, but that's what I expected. All right.